During the time that this video was being made, two amazing things happen. The first one is that our channel reached 1 million subscribers. Try to picture a million people in a room. It's honestly a bit mind-blowing. I try not to think about it, but it's still something that I'm very grateful for. Thank you all so much for the support. And the second amazing thing is the Spring Invitational Tournament. This is a massive DVD event that brought together some of the best teams across several regions. And even though this is still ongoing, even though this tournament isn't even over yet, I think it's safe to say this might just be the most incredible, insane tournament that I have ever seen. In just one day, we saw some plays that will literally go down as part of DVD history. Stuff of legend. Unbelievable plays. And today, I'm going to share with you my favorite ones. And we're starting things off with what is perhaps one of the most subtle yet brilliant plays that I've ever seen in a tournament like this. Something so creative that is probably going to blow your mind. It was done by Team X9, one of the top American teams that won the previous Invitational Tournament. And they were playing Survivor against a Pinhead. They played incredibly aggressively, picking out the box at the start. The killer tried their best to get an early hit on the person that solved the box, but to no avail. The player Note, who was playing Nia, did such a good job at dodging every single chance to get hit that the killer had to leave, and this was a really good start for the survivors. But shortly after, when Wispy, the Claudette player, was being chased, a disaster was looming. They didn't realize that they were actually running into the box. The survivors see the auto of the box, and the killer doesn't. But if you take the killer next to the box and he hears it, then he can pick it up, which starts all the slowdown from the chains, and that could completely change the outcome of the game. Now, obviously, if the survivor did a complete 180, it would be quite obvious for the killer that the box was there. They had to find a way to distract the killer and make them not hear the box. And in that moment, Wispy realized that he had a firecracker. He threw it on the ground, which, from the killer's point of view, almost looks like a panicky move that survivors sometimes do when they know they're going to take a hit and want to distract the killer. And they were successful in creating a sound distraction that made the killer not realize just how close they were to the box. This is the moment when me and Hans, the organizer and other commentator, realized what just happened. Get injuries on the bot, but this is running oh. into the box. Is that for yes, him not to uh, hear the box? What is it that might cracker? Be, it might be. That's an insane. It actually might be. I think oh my this God. might be the first time ever where someone has thrown a firecracker. So the killer doesn't hear the little electric zizzling sounds of the box. And if that wasn't mind-blowing enough, check out just how amazingly precise their communication was and how well his teammates protected Wispy right after this. Oh. Wispy tasting the oh, wall a little bit. This will be bit. a down, this will be a down, unless a protection hit happens. <gasps> no way! The, the survivor actually has time to top the gen. That has the... <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> demonic behavior. Another body block comes in. The purple atom that makes the survivor being mending now is a factor, which would delay any healing and prevent perks like Deadheart. Uh, incredibly early drop. And the chain hunt is starting, but Nia wow. is on the job, and I don't think the killer can teleport to this. After such a display of skill and teamwork, it's no surprise that Team X9 won this round by quite a lot. But that is actually the opposite of what happened in the next match. In the next matchup, we had Team Trauma and Team Tremor. These two teams had a similar name and ended up with similar scores. At the end of the match, survivors were almost, almost able to tie the result, but they had to rescue their teammate on the hook. At this point, if they just left, they would have lost. If they wanted to tie, they actually had to rescue their teammate and make sure that nobody else got hooked, which is much, much harder when there is one person as the Rancor obsession. With this perk, this person could not help, so they had to engineer some kind of miracle to make sure that everyone could escape. And they did just that. They, they have to have a clean escape. They can't even trade anything. Nice. So. Oh, my God. Oh, Nearby blocking. Dear. Is that yeah. pass up? No, it's not. That's she not can, enough. She, she, can, she, can, she can just get hit. She can just get hit. <gasps> no. Oh, my God. They dodge. No way. Wow, they get out. No way. Somehow, these survivors from Team Tremor had managed to pull off the impossible and got a four-man escape. 
This meant that they now were tied and a tiebreaker would need to take place. In this format, the tiebreaker is quite unique and really fun. Both teams send their best survivor against the killer of the other side, and whichever survivor lasts the longest wins the whole round for their team. For Team Tremor, though, this was bad news because their opponent was Grenout. Grenout is a player that you've already seen in this channel before. He has a legendary status in the community for being one of the best 1v1 players period. His pathing and ability to react and read the opponent is just absolutely unmatched. And honestly, I can think of nothing scarier than chasing this guy as a killer. Somehow, however, the killer from Team Tremor managed to do just that and down him in less than two minutes with even some cheeky mind games involved. This was very impressive, but still, their survivor now had to match those two minutes. It was actually the same player that played Killer that went into it as a survivor, playing as Feng Min, one of the loudest characters in the game, with this bright outfit, absolute confidence, through the roof, and then managed to pull off this chase. Yeah. Nice, so we start with a teabag and a swing, and the timer is on. You see oh. it on the top left. Okay, so there's no bamboozle, so we can juice up on Shaq for a long, long, long time. Yes. And that's what Zafis is trying to do yeah. here. Did he even scout the match yeah. much? And he's just running around. There's a bit of ping in this I'm not matchup, sure. It was, pretty, it was pretty fast. <gasps> I will say, though, that it takes a lot of courage to risk getting mind game here, especially when you're very nervous. But getting one loop out of the Shaq and then dropping pallet with a lot of early uh, distance is great. Keep in mind, no power usage either. So the trapper's not setting a trap. They cannot do that. Uh, okay, we're at 45 seconds. Yada. What? Yep, yep. Um, oh, the mind game. Mind that the trapper <gasps> makes a lot of noise when he yes. moves around, so it's quite difficult. This is why you pay money it's quite for Naughty Bear. difficult for mind games to happen. <laughs> yeah, true. Oh, dude. Oh, my God, dude. This is a hit. No, it's not Davis even. Davis is playing great. Oh, my God. Oh my god, that <gasps> space bar being basically just teased at this point. The absolute date of Zaphis right absolutely now. Absolutely juicing up. This has yes. only been a minute and 30 seconds, but it feels like an eternity at this point. Okay, and we don't even have a first hit yet. We're approaching 10 minutes on the timer. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> oh my god. It does feel like that, by the way. I've had chases oh, like bro? this. That feel There's like no way he's minutes. him, though. There's no way he does oh that. My god. Oh, is that legal? Oh, yeah. is it a oh hit? My God. Oh. That is a hit. First hit happens here. Uh, is he gonna get anywhere though? He might be zoned. Oh yeah, this might actually be a bit short. Oh I no! I don't know. I. Oh, Cast a curse. A Cast a that curse. Never broken earlier. Watch out. Gwen. It's gonna happen at this point. Zoning, yeah. No, oh, he's zoning. But, but yeah, but he's being zoned back. Yeah. Oh Wait, no! Did the killer lose track of him? Not Gwen oh, with the pathing. They, they could reach maybe. They could maybe reach Kaltry. Do they? That would reset the bloodlust. That is Ooh, yes. That yes. Decision. <gasps> Holding our breath. Oh, this changes everything. Resetting bloodlust might as well sometimes just. Well, to be but, fair, they are pretty hard zone into shock. Oh man. Oh man. There was a pallet back in the middle. Was that pallet ever used? Or yes. Does yes. It come it was. Now to There's a... nothing here. There's literally just shift tech this window. Oh. I think. No, you can't shift tech. Is that enough? 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 Oh, oh dude! No, no. What? Oh my god! It's bots! They're so There's big! No They're There's so big! No way! Now that was an amazing performance, but if we talk about performances, we have to talk about Zeno. Zeno is one of the oldest and most experienced veterans in the DVD competitive scene. He is an unbelievably talented player, and even though he has a reputation of being a little bit inconsistent, when he focuses and delivers his entire brain power into his gameplay, I think we can all agree that he's an unstoppable monster. At the start of the tournament, Zeno played against one of the top teams in the roster and managed to kill everyone, everyone, with five generators still remaining as a nurse. He then did something very similar as Blight, killing everyone with only one generator done, which is no small feat against another top team. And at this point, some of you might think, well, true, he might have killed everyone super early, but he was playing Nurse and Blight, very strong killers, right? It can happen, maybe a stroke of luck. 
think again. Zeno did the exact same thing playing as Demogorgon against yet another top tier team soon after that. With Demogorgon, he managed to kill everyone without a single generator getting done. Something absolutely unheard of, nothing short of perfect gameplay and exploiting every little mistake the survivors made. And honestly, you need to see how exactly it happened. It's just an unbelievable sequence of events. Uh, and the fast chase is starting. Bucky being hit already. He cannot. This is going to be an early chase. That looks like a down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it oh, does. He didn't crouch. And the pop being applied. Oh, we see urban evasion. Okay, that's definitely a statement. Crouching is still worth it. <laughs> and another gen being kicked. Yeah. I think Xenos is happy to be in this area for now. We saw Xeno bring some amazing performances and some of the most dominating killer matches uh, that we've ever seen in a setting like this. Yeah. With four kills at five gens, and then also four kills of four gens um, with both Blight and Nurse. This, however, is a bit of a step down in terms of like actual raw power, <sighs> but it doesn't mean that he cannot clutch it, though. Are they just doing gens? I think they're just doing gens, and they're not going yeah. for Darnok. No, it's it's quite common for people to hit stage two here, it seems. Yeah, Bucky indeed reaches stage two and multiple gens disrupted sadly. Oh, a portal placement, a little kick, and goodbye. There he goes, back he to the hook. He expected the Yeah, he expected the unhook and I mean honestly oh, was quite this... a, was definitely on point. What? Oh my god. And a little bit of a body block to boot. Oh, makes the sprint burst honestly not much of a factor. Wow. Decides to wait out the 10 seconds knowing that bar time cannot be in play. And Bucky's dead. Damn. How? What, five we have gens? five gens. Oh, he's actually Was that hooking. a visual bug? Oh, he's so greedy. He's so he's greedy. Dangerous. I mean, it's going to pay off. It's gonna pay off. We might see a 5 gen 4 kill on Demogorgon. Oh, what? No way. Incredible insight to know that they're actually waiting for the unhook. If this down happens quickly, and it might despite the balance. Oh, <gasps> great, great fake out from Benny though. Yeah, that Vin does give them a little bit of a, re uh, of a second chance, but. Yeah, but Claudette is. Goodness. Okay, Claudette gets the pick, but at what cost? That is Sprint Boss oh, from oops. Ace. That is a good spin burst, yeah. Sadly, it doesn't translate into much time for our ace, who is now dead on his second hook. Leave it to Zeno to make Demo look like an A tier killer. And uh, dare I say that with multiple pain presses left, Eruption and Bob, could, could this be like a four kill at four chance? It might oh, just be, Lord, yeah. It looks like it might. Uh, that couldn't be life. Just wow. a bit of a time waste, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Zoop really couldn't make much out of it. Spinning the camera to make the commentator throw up. <laughs> Success. <laughs> okay, I've been evading it there. I don't know. How do you get... What, what do you get here? Like, what do you even play for? Like, this I, is... This is Jen even going to complete. There, there, yeah, there's, there's a failure teleport. in... Yeah. There's some kind of failure in, in how they approach this. This is now, to this be fair though. Like, unironically looks how like a fucking. How did Zeno five. know to? How did he know to go back and interrupt that at the perfect time? Like Zeno is so nah, unbelievable. Just, dude. Yeah, he, he just has the the. He just has a sixth sense, and this is gonna be pop He's, on that gen. Oh my! Unironically, if he instantly goes for that. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we get a rare chance to see what the teleporter looks like with a buggy spectator camera. And Zeno just playing like an anime character that just knows everything and just predicts everything. And has the skill to match it up and goes for the perfect survivor. Nah. And he's going to get Nance nah. and Claudette it's and the third survivor, which means we will see a four kills at five Wait, generators. Okay, just to sum it up, me. right? This yeah. is the Here's South American super team, by the way. Like, this is not yeah. just your ordinary survivors. Goodness gracious, dude. Somebody nerfed this man. 
or rather study what he had for breakfast and make that the diet of everybody. Oh my goodness. And talking about legendary players, back from the grave, we have Team Eternal, which disbanded for some time, but has now come back together. Individually, these players are insane, but together, they are just straight up unstoppable. In this round, they played against another top-tier European team, a very, very high-level one called Ariandel, and against their doctor, they managed an incredible result. They only got hooked twice by the time the end game came around. At this moment, the doctor got a kill thanks to Noed, and then it was a basement hook, and most teams would have been happy with this result. Five hook stages, one kill against a doctor? That's not bad. They could probably win with those numbers, but this is Team Eternal, and they proved why they are the best by going for the rescue. Dude, if they, if they even consider getting in there, dude. Do they? I think they do. I think they do. What? Oh, they do! Nah, They're pretending. Nah, They're nah, pretending. Nah, what? Nah, nah, nah. Easy rescue. Now, oh. Zaka needs to do a choke tech and just choke the killer a choke little bit. Choke tech? Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They need to get creative oh, but here. No! No! <laughs> oh, doesn't even make oh, any noise! No. Oh, no! Get to stage, though! Oh. I hope he's also in play! This is unbelievable. Wait, the killer has been somehow nah, tricked bro, what is this? into coming out. Ah! The, the, Why has witness? What? What? Wait, they're not out though, no? The gate is not open. They just uh, started healing. The gate is not open. Yes. Um. Yeah, we have a bit of a problem. Now, if this Claudette remains a bit undetected and... She, wait. Oh, she has lucky break. Oh, what an unfortunate situation though. Pressing the space bar. Super intensely there. Oh dear lord. They could get hatched though. They could get hatched. <gasps> oh my god, they could get hatched. There's a small chance. Oh, oh they're trying unlikely. to climb. But if she gets this window, Wait. and then the other window on the right. Into, Wait, a body block. Into happens. double body block. Nah, they're out. They're out. They're out. They, oh, oh, they opened the other gate in the meantime. Oh, no. Shot. No way, the Hope Adam body blocking! Wait, Dan doesn't make oh it though. Oh my... Dan is not out. Uh, Dan is just going to the I other mean, gate. Yeah, he's going to the other gate. He nah, he's it. fine, he's fine. Little wow. heal tag, uh, rapid brutality, it doesn't make a difference, sadly. Absolute... Wait. P Dude, how do you just save nah, that basement? But yeah, maybe I'm biased, but I do generally think that this might be the best tournament that we have ever seen for Dead by Daylight. And the craziest part is that it's not even over yet. There are still several days and a lot more matches. We might see even crazier moments still. So I'll be sure to leave the links in the description if you want to catch them live when they occur. I'll be certainly watching and maybe covering it in future videos if you like this format. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. See you in the next one. And thank you again so much for the 1 million subscribers. It really means a lot. It really, really does mean a lot. Thank you.